Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Advanced Convolutional Neural Networks. In this lecture, we're going to look at how to recreate style in code. Remember that this is the second half of style transfer. The basic outline is similar to the previous code example. We're going to grab an image to use as our style. We're going to create a VGG network that has multiple outputs at five different convolutions in the network. Once we have those outputs, we need to create a function that can calculate the gram matrix. And once we've done that, we can build the mean squared error as usual and do the same optimization steps as the previous script. So at the top, we get right into the gram matrix calculation with the gram matrix function. This takes in a 3D image and returns the features by features gram matrix. The first thing we need to do is make this a features by height times width 2D array. So to do that, we first have to permute the dimensions. In Theano, this would be dim shuffle. In TensorFlow, it would be transpose. Once we've permuted the dimensions, we can flatten everything except the first dimension. In Theano and TensorFlow, this would just be the flattened function. Next, we calculate the matrix product between x and x transpose and divide by the total number of elements. Note that this division isn't really necessary since we'll be weighting the mean squared error anyway. Next, we have a function to get the style loss. This takes in the target image and the generated image, calculates the gram matrix for both, and then does the mean squared error. Next, we have the minimize function. Note that this is basically the same loop that you saw in the first script, so I'm not going to bother describing the entire thing again. But I've put it in a function to make it more reusable, and you'll see that in the next script, we won't have to rewrite it. Next, we have the main section. So here you can see several style images that I've copied into the repo. You are, of course, free to try your own as well. These are just here to give you something to play with. Next, we do all the same steps we did previously on the content image. Load it in, convert it into a NumPy array, preprocess it, and get the shape. Next, we make use of the function we wrote in the last lecture, VGG16 average pool. We don't need the cutoff version because in this case we want the whole thing. This will not be our final model, however, since this only has one output. What we need to do is collect all the symbolic outputs at the layers we are interested in. So one very convenient feature about Keras is that it gives each layer a name. So you can loop through all the layers and check their names. And these names are the same names that are printed out when you call the summary function. So to pick the same layers they used in the paper, we want the output at any convolution that ends with conv1. We just collect these in a list, which I'm calling symbolic conv outputs. Note that I'm using layer.getOutputAt, which is a function, whereas normally you would just do layer.output. The reason this is required is sort of weird, so understanding this is optional. But when we made our VGG16 earlier, recall that we replaced all the max pools with average pools. So we created a new model using layers of an existing model. So in memory, Keras sees that there are actually two models that exist, and they share some layers. So the layers have two outputs because they are two different models representing two different paths through the layers, depending on whether you're using the max pool model or the average pool model. Since the max pool model was created first, that gets index 0, and the average pool model gets index 1. Next, I have some commented out code that lets you select a subset of the outputs. You can try this to see what kind of effect it has. Remember that a CNN's earlier layers find smaller localized features, whereas the later layers find larger, more global features. Next, we create the model we're actually going to use. The reason we need to do this is so we can specify the symbolic outputs we just created as actual outputs of the model. 
So that's why I call this the multi-output model. Next, we have the targets, which I'm calling style layers outputs. To get these, I'm passing in the actual style image and then calling the predict function on the multi-output model we just created. Because the model has multiple outputs, that means we can loop through each of them to get each of the actual NumPy arrays it's calculated. Next, we calculate the style loss. This is just the sum of all the losses at every layer. Note that I'm not weighting anything here, although you could if you wanted to. We will do it in the next lecture. So remember, this is still all symbolic except for the targets. So what I'm doing is summing up the style loss between the symbolic output and the target output, which we just calculated. The next few steps are all things we saw in the last grip, but it's nice to review. So first we calculate the gradients with respect to the input. Then we create a get loss in grads function. Since this accepts and returns an image shape, we have our wrapper, which accepts and returns vectors. Finally, we call the minimize function, which does the optimization, and then we scale the image and plot it. So let's run this and see what we get. So this is very cool. This image precisely captures the style of Starry Night, but without any global detail. You can't see any of the major structures that appear in the original painting. But looking at this, you can tell that the essence of the style of Starry Night is still there. As a follow-up exercise to this lecture, what I want you to do is this. Try the same script on other images to extract their style and see what they look like. Also try weighting the different convolution outputs to see what kind of effect it has on the final result.